Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, Praise everybody. The, Lord. the Bible said, when I, I was glad when they sent unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are excited about Jesus today. Are you excited about Jesus? Are you excited about Jesus? We're about to give God some praise today. Hallelujah. We're about to give God some praise. If you expected something, you're about to get what you expect right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You're going to be healed. You're going to be set free. You're going to be delivered today. You're going to receive everything that you have for every day. Hallelujah. Come on one more time for Jesus. Shout glory. Here we go. Sing it with me, say, Father, 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 we praise you, Jesus, 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 we love you, Holy Spirit, yes, yeah. we adore you, yes, we do. Let me hear them drums, say, play. Father, 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 we praise you, Jesus, 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 we love you, Holy Spirit, yes, yeah. we adore you.
we got to make some noise. You got to make some noise for your freedom. Hey, come on, clap your hands. I want to see you. Y'all ready? Clap your hands. Hey. Come on, clap your hands. Hey. Hey! 
to praise him right there. You want to praise him right there for your freedom. I am healed. I am free. And no more chains are holding me. Father is come and it is done. Whatever you need is already done. It's already done. It's already done. By his stripes. Every stripe. You are healed. You are set free. I don't have to walk in fear. Because they know I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, because God is with me. God is with me through the storm, through the rain, through the heartache, and through the pain. I'm free, and I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I am healed. I am free. No more chains are holding me. How many of you are free this morning? Hallelujah. We are free because we can call on the name of Jesus. If you don't have anything to say, if you may be bound by whatever situation, just know that if you don't know what else to say, you can call on the name of Jesus. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to call on the name of Jesus. Let's go. Like 
for you, Jesus. Oh, Here we go. Oh, nobody greater. Nobody greater than me. You said nobody. Nobody greater than you. Nobody stronger than you. Your name is higher than the name. Jesus, Jesus. yeah. Nobody. Nobody bigger than you. No one can do what you do. Oh. Your name is somebody yeah hallelujah go tell them there's no greater love than Jesus go find him <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah y'all tell them you're greatly blessed highly favored and deeply loved <laughs> That's it, Larry. <laughs> Janine, yeah. Amen. Go ahead and grab your seat. make some noise for the band, the singers, the dancers, and the whole team. Now make some noise for Jesus. Well, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord, and I'm glad that you're here today, and let me jump right into it. First of all, we're glad that you're here, and we're so honored that you're blessed to, uh, to be in the house of the Lord. Anybody glad to be alive? And not only alive, but saved in the kingdom of God. Well, let me see. This is Julie Shanae's part, and uh, I didn't realize she wasn't going to be up here. So uh, let's see here. Let me make some of these announcements really quickly. Water baptism is coming up, y'all. If you have not been water baptized, and uh, maybe you got, you got sprinkled when you were a child. Maybe you got dipped. Maybe they uh, dedicated you, but you never got water baptized. Jesus got water baptized, and we're having water baptism on Sunday, the 28th. There's a class that we have that starts at 915. If you haven't been water baptized, we want to encourage you to do so. You can also register online at destinygso.org. And I understand that a girl time event is coming up May the 18th at 1030 a.m. Praise the Lord. And there will be a breakfast and 
talk session. Yes, yes. The $8 fee, you can go online and register for that. Amen. And all the other announcements, they're online. All the classes, all the schools, and we'll get all that at the end. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tell that person that you're sitting right next to that God's not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. Amen. Amen. Well, how many of y'all, let's see, again, Sinead does all that stuff. Y'all got to give me the notes. I don't know what I'm... The welcome, the welcome. Why don't y'all come up and do it? That's a good idea. Why don't you come up and do it? That's a good idea. That's a better idea. Come on, somebody, make some noise. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. Go ahead. Stand right up here in front. Stand right here, right here so they can see you. Praise the Lord. Real quickly. Good morning, family. Woo, well, we want to welcome the first-time guests. And if you are a first-time guest, you want to text CONNECT, that's C-O-N-N-E-C-T, to 336-203-8586. Back up. If you're watching online, of course, we definitely want you to do that and let us know that you're a first-time guest because we want to stay connected to you. Our service times are Sunday at 10.30 a.m. in person, but of course you can join online. And also this service re-airs today at 3 p.m. Our Wednesday service, 12 noon in person, and you can watch it online. It re-airs at 7 p.m. Stay connected on social media platforms with Destiny GSO. YouTube, Destiny GSO, our Destiny app, of course, Destiny GSO, and Facebook, Lee Stokes at Destiny That's GSO. Yeah. So you can subscribe to our newsletter as well, and you can see all the other announcements and events that are happening at Destiny GSO. But we want to say welcome, and we're glad that you are joining and staying connected today. Amen? That's right. All right Thank Pastor you, Pastor Lee. Inda. And if it's your first time here, uh, we want to make sure that you see us. At least I know I'll be in Guest Central, and they'll let you know that. But I want to hug your neck before you get out of here. Thank you for joining with us. Well, now it's time for generosity. Is that right? I should have had y'all do that part too. Uh, praise the Lord. You know, I got to remember like some music. I got to remember the opens, the closes, and my message and announcements. I forget that kind of stuff sometimes. Well, praise the Lord. How many are excited to be a giver? How many of you know that the Bible says that you are blessed to be a blessing? How many of you want to be blessed? Well, the Bible lets us know that you're blessed to be a blessing. The Bible says that God gives seed to the sower. And so I want to encourage you, encourage you that God blesses everybody. Say, I'm blessed. Everybody on the face of the earth is blessed, and many don't realize it. And oftentimes, many people eat their seed. But God teaches us in the Word. It is one of the first principles in the Word of God that we must sow seed. You can pray. You can do a lot of things. But in order to grow, you've got to be able to put some seed in the ground. Say, I'm ready to sow. Come on, make some noise, somebody. Say, I'm ready to sow. Well, praise the Lord. The ways to give. Let me see. Yes, yes. There we go. Come on. Y'all got to lead me and help me do this. Praise the Lord. Ways to give online at destinygso.org, or you can text the word give to 336-344-7088, or always you can mail your seeds, tithes, and gifts to P.O. Box 16065, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27416. Amen. Or you can also drop it off right here uh, uh, or mail it to the actual building address, 2401 Randleman Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. Or you may call the church office for your secure debit or credit card giving or scan that QR code that's on a chair right there in front of you. And lastly, you can always give on our app. We're blessed to be a blessing. And I got to just tell y'all, we have a lot of things in store for you. I shared some with the team in the back and been sharing with the, with the leadership and the team that God is doing some great things here in Destiny. One of the big things, and I'll share it in my message. I better not get into that. Oh, I will get off of my schedule. How many of you know that we like to make faith confessions here? 
And in my message, we're going to talk a little bit today about some affirmations. But let's, as we give today, do you mind standing up on your feet and let's make this, if you can, if you can't, no worries, but stand up on your feet. Let's make this faith confession real loud and strong. Why do we make so many faith confessions? That's right. Your life is following your words, your mouth. Say this real loud and strong as you give. Say it. I profess. Come on. That the. I have, which you have provided for me, because you, I bring the, and worship you with it. You have provided for me the abundant life. Come on. All of my needs are met. I, And the gift of righteousness. Now I thank you, Heavenly Father, that the windows of heaven are open right now, pouring me out a blessing that I don't have room enough to receive it. Satan cannot touch my, my mind. Come on. I am. Because of the. I am. Say it. Come on, give God the biggest shot of praise you've given him all day today. Come on, is that the biggest shot, God? Make some noise. Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. Well, are y'all ready for the word? No, are y'all really ready for the word? I'm not sure yet. Well, hang on. Can y'all mute my mic one second? Let me make sure I'm, I'm... All right. How's that? Yeah, yeah. Sound like somebody was shooting bullets up here at me just a minute ago, and I could tell when I bent over. If I bent over a little bit more, it was going to sound like a rapid-fire machine gun. Well, let's get into the Word, y'all. Let me just tell you, first of all, that uh, I started a series last week. Started a series last week. That's a three-part series, and uh, we titled it Mental Health. And, uh, and, And I began to share with you that I'd been through some, in my life, y'all know I'll be 63 years young, but did I do the faith confession already? Oh, grab your Bible, let's do that. See, that's why y'all gotta put stuff on the screen, y'all. I got so many things going through my mind. Praise the Lord, grab your Bible, let's make this faith confession real loud and strong. Say it real loud, ready? Irritate that person standing next to you, come on. This is, come on, Uh uh-huh. I can, and I, as I, Keeping them, then shall I, I shall, all the, in, come on, give God one more big old shout of praise. Oh, y'all, is that all y'all got? Come on. From. I started a series last week called Mental Health, and uh, I shared with you, and really just wanted to pour out my heart to you because uh, I, I was going through really over the last couple of months just really some just real heaviness heaviness in my in my mind and just felt really under pressure I'd never re- well the worst times in my life I shared with you all last week were probably my parents divorce I was a teenager and then my divorce that I went through early on in life I mean over 30 years ago and uh, but my life is very blessed. I get to do what I love to do, and, and uh, I enjoy that. I, I love my marriage. I'm really enjoying my life. My life is very, very blessed. And this was part of the problem that I was like, why am I waking up like this? Why am I feeling heavy? And it was just, it had gotten to the point, and I shared last week, that I had thoughts of quitting the ministry. I mean, real strong, like I'm done, I'm, I'm finished. I never really had thoughts about hurting myself or anything, but I was just like, you know, I had enough. I don't want to do this anymore. I am tired. And there were many factors, and, and it really bothered me. It, it was like, whoa, what in the world is going on? I was praying, and y'all know it. I get up, and I, I'm in the Word on a consistent basis. I, I exercise every day. I eat pretty good. You get it? I mean, I got an Oreo problem, but 
double stuff to be exactly. Uh, but, but, uh, but for the most part, I live a really pretty balanced life. And, and so I couldn't understand it. I couldn't really put my finger on it. And uh, so what I did was I got off, I got off uh, prayer and proverb. I got off line, and I was like, let me get with God. And, I, and fortunately, we had, a, we had scheduled where we were going to go away, and Trey was working in Las Vegas, and so we were there. And I decided, well, let me just get away, and I'll get up. And I'd walk the whole strip in the morning. I'd get up in the morning, and it's 11 miles. I'd just get up and walk and jog, and it'd take me a couple hours, and I'd just just walk and jog it and talk to God and and I got some real clarity and I got some real peace and I'd ordered a book I'd ordered this book and I want to show it to y'all I want to show it to you because I'm telling you I was at a point where it's like you know I'm done with this I'm done with this and I and I I couldn't really share it with anybody because I couldn't put my finger on why and it was really bothering me but uh I ordered a book I you know I started going online going what in the world is going on with me and I I got this book and uh it came right before we left for Las Vegas a couple weeks ago and I hopefully they'll put it up on the screen if they can see yeah it's called out of the cave by Chris Hodges and I don't know if you're if you've ever been through depression if you've if you've ever felt that heaviness but this book I, I got it the day before we were leaving, and I, and I started, I opened it, got a, I took it with me, and I got, we went to the airport, I'm reading it, I'm sitting there reading it, sitting on the plane, I'm sitting there reading the book, I mean, I went halfway through the book before we got to Las Vegas, it's a long flight, it's like a four hour something flight, and I mean, after I read a few chapters, I was like, I get it, I know what the problem is. God was able to reveal to me once I just got rid of the noise and I walked and I talked to God about it while we were in Vegas that week. And I got to tell you today, I walked in the office today and I saw Pastor Enda and I said, Enda, I feel so free. I am, I, I got clarity on what I'm supposed to do. And, and so I want you, if, y'all see this book? If you've ever experienced what I'm talking about, put your hand up real high. Just if you know what I'm, okay, get this book right here. Hit up Amazon, it'll be there at your house by the time we get home from church today in just a few minutes. Y'all get what I'm saying? Amen, amen. So that's some of the stuff that I'm sharing with you. I've got these steps that are straight from the Bible that this pastor, and, 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 and the amazing thing, and I'll share as I get here, one of the connections that God made just by me getting this book was with the guy who wrote the book. It was an amazing thing, and I'll explain some more of that. But let's get into this. Today, I want to pick up from where I left off. Y'all remember last week, we talked about this. Just simply, we just talked about that there is freedom from depression. Say, there is freedom from depression. And so all we did last week, y'all, God, we found out from the scriptures that God used many great people in the Bible that had been, in fact, all the people that God uses got some issues and some problems. I mean, God be using murderers, God be using adulterers, some people whose lives are tore up from the floor up. When they turn their life over to God, God's like, I can fix you, and you're going to fix some people. And that's what we found out from the Scriptures. And that's all I did last Sunday, just show you that this is a real legitimate problem. I gave you some statistics and all that kind of stuff. And, and we wonder, if you missed last week, please, please, if by any means you or anybody you know is dealing with this, please go back last week because that's all we talked about was there was freedom. And we looked at some characters in the Bible. We looked at Job, David, Jeremiah, uh, the Apostle Paul, all went through some depression. But this is the main thing we found out last week, and then we're going to move on, that depression is not a malfunction of the mind, but a signal. It's an indicator that something needs to change. Just like in your car, it has an indicator dash, and if your tires are low in air, if you're low on gas, don't that little light come on? And if you ignore that light, you're going to get stopped. And this is what depression, anxiety, stress, and there's different levels, and next week we'll talk some more about this. We'll give you the answers. But, but I'm telling you in this book, this guy who wrote this book, Chris Hodges, he's a pastor of one of the, one of the largest churches in the world and uh, about the largest church in this country, and probably most of you have never heard of him because of the system that they put in place. And we'll, you'll be hearing more about that. But... Uh, but what, what I found out from the scriptures is that God came for us to have freedom. 
And in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, last week we covered this, that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Jesus came to set us free, and we get free spiritually, but that's not the end of it. That's really just the beginning of it. All of us need freedom from addictions, from stuff, and so it is for that freedom that Christ came to make us free. Somebody say amen. amen. And so there's so many scriptures about that, and we'll, we'll get further into that in, at another time. But there is freedom from depression. But here's what we did. We laid this foundation, and I'm going to dig in a little bit deeper today and just talk to you about how you get into depression how you get in. I'm just going to show you six, six steps straight from the Bible, straight from one guy's story that I, that'll show you how any of us, let me see again, how many of y'all been in some depression? I mean, some dark, dark, yeah, it can be very heavy. And you say, Pastor, I've never been there. Well, good, you need this because this will keep you from going into it. Are y'all listening to me? But what we did find out that there are some biological and gen genetic issues that do require some counseling and some meds, and nothing's wrong with that. There are some cases where people have some biological issues. They've got some stuff. Y'all get it? Y'all notice I put on these little glasses sometimes to read. Why? Because I'm a human being, and my eyes aren't perfect. In fact, my eyes have gotten significantly better over the years, but, but my mom is sitting right there. She'll tell you that, that I had a lazy, I had all kinds of problems. Y'all get it? I'm not a perfect person. Are y'all with me? There's some, there's some there, I, I'm not a perfect human being. There's only one that was perfect, and that's, what's his name? Amen. Amen. So, so there's some stuff that we can do to help us. I put these glasses on to help me see. Y'all get it? I'm using my faith, but at the same time, in the meantime, y'all don't want me... La, bre, breathe, no, no. Oh, there it is, there it is. It. Y'all get what I'm saying? So there may, may be some situations where you need some counseling, you need some meds and all that kind of stuff, but we don't want to make that exclusively the narrative because the Bible addresses it. And for many of us, there are some controllable and cause, some, some causes that have put us in depression that can get us right out, and the Bible is the instruction manual that shows us that and shows us how to get out. Are y'all with me today? And so last week, I ended up talking about this one guy in the Bible arguably perhaps the greatest prophet in the Old Testament, and his name is Elijah. The name is Elijah. And why I say arguably one of the greatest is because uh, in, he's in the New Testament too. He, there's, he showed up in the New Testament with Jesus at the Mount Transfiguration. You all remember that? Moses, Elijah, and Jesus, because Moses represented the, the law and Elijah represented the prophets. He shows up. Uh, in Revelation, y'all been watching the news lately? Y'all see Iran in the news? Y'all know that's all written in the scriptures. And the Old Testament talks about Iran. It talks about Russia and China all going against Israel. So when you saw that on the news this week, it was just exactly what's written in, I, in Ezekiel. Exactly what, and I won't get into that. I've topped that before last year. But just keep watching the news. You keep hearing about Putin, and I better not digress. But all that stuff is right there in the Old Testament. They're going to attack Russia. You heard it here. Just keep watching. Are y'all with me? Amen. We're in the last days, wars and rumors of wars. Amen. All right, all right. Uh, but back to Elijah, back to Elijah. He is one of those prophets after the rapture that he is going to be one of the two witnesses that preach the gospel and gets killed. He never died. He gets translated, right? But he will die in the book of Revelation chapter 11 after the rapture. Y'all with me? Again, all that's prophesied. Say, God already knows. Yeah, yeah. So then, we say, the, just, just a brief background about Elijah, why I believe he's one of the greatest. There's just a few chapters in the Old Testament about him, but in chapter 17 of 1 Kings is where he's introduced, and he has this life of miracles. I mean, he had prophesied because Israel was so off the chain, he prophesied and, and said it's not going to rain for three and a half years, and it didn't. And in that same chapter 17, uh, during that famine time when there had been no rain, God was miraculously feeding him with uh, ravens and, and by the brook Cherith and after that dried all up, God did miracles for him, had a will woman feed him with just a little oil and little, little crumbs in the bottom of a bowl that didn't run out. I mean, he lived a life of miracles. That boy ended up dying during that famine time, right, later on after the, right? And 
He raised him from the dead all in chapter 17. In chapter 18, perhaps one of the most preachable chapters in the Old Testament, Kings chapter 18, 1 Kings chapter 18. Y'all remember this? It was the showdown at Mount Carmel with the God of, of the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 uh, prophets of Asherah, right? Versus the God of uh, Elijah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Y'all remember that? They had a calf and they had this showdown. And we talked about it last week and, and God showed himself. And I explained that last week, all in chapter 18. And then there was this hilarious miracle at the end of chapter 18. Remember, it's it, at the end of chapter 18 is where it hadn't rained and then all of a sudden, uh, Isaiah, I mean, uh, Elijah prophesies it's going to rain. There wasn't a cloud in the sky and a, 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 right, King Ahaz, he's very equal evil king and his wife is Jezebel and what he prophesies that it's going to rain and it was just a little cloud and all of a sudden he says hey uh, King Ahaz you better get back to Jezreel before it rains because I hear the, the sound of an abundance of rain but here's the funny part one of the last verses in chapter 18 says that the king Ahab went back went back to Jezreel right but then Elisha outran the horses and chariots he told King Ahab to hurry up and get back. But then he, the Bible says he took his robe and stuck it in his belt and took off running. And it's a 16-mile run. He beat the horses. While he's there, King Ahab goes to his wife, the wicked queen Jezebel, and says, tells him, tells her the whole story about what happened at the showdown of Mark Carmel where they killed, where uh, Elijah had all of the prophets of Baal, all of her prophets killed with the sword. They all got killed in one day. She was livid. And guess what she does? Here's where the story picks up. Turn over in your Bible. Are y'all with me? So he had this huge life of miracles. And really in the last, in these 30 days before, it was just nonstop running. And the day before this happened, he had just run 16 miles. He was going nuts. His life was back to back, say, very, very busy. Miraculous, but busy. This is where the story picks up. Are y'all in 1 Kings? I'll put it up here on the screen. 1 Kings chapter 19. Here we go. Verse 1, and I'm just going to read verse. I'm just going to read a few verses. We're going to look at a few verses today and then a few verses next week. I want to show you today that the Bible clearly shows there were six steps that put this man, this great prophet, who just experienced these miracles, in just one day everything turned and he says, I don't want to live anymore one day it's all right here in the scriptures and then it shows us how he got out we'll get to that next week are y'all with me so are y'all excited we're gonna we're gonna get delighted and talk about some depression today somebody get excited about that <laughs> sorry y'all i just we better figure this out <laughs> are y'all all right all right verse one one through four watch this when ahab got home the king right he told his wife Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah. She didn't send a killer. She sent a word. She could have sent a hitman, but she sent an Instagram message. She sent a message on your inbox in Facebook. He read a comment. He didn't actually see any problem. He heard of a potential problem. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah, may the gods strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed my prophets, them. Verse 3. Y'all get that? Elijah, verse 3, was afraid and fled for his life based off of a word and no action. Please hear what I'm saying here. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba. Now, we'll get into that next week. This is very important because that is the same place where he got the call. 
It's the place of his calling. That's the place where he vowed to always serve the Lord and work for the Lord. He went back to that place and decided, nope, I'm quitting. Watch. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. Say he's all alone. Y'all remember his servant, you're going to see him in 2 Kings. And remember, they were, in fact, we see him in this chapter. He tells a servant to go out and, and uh, there's going to be some rain. His servant went out there and was like, there ain't no crane. There ain't even a cloud in the sky. That dude. He left him. Say he's all alone. Say isolation. Y'all getting the clues here? Then he went alone into the wilderness. Say all alone. Into the wilderness. Are y'all with me? Traveling all day, watch this, he sat down under a solitary broom tree. Again, you keep hearing this. He's getting by himself. He's sitting out in the hot sun, but he gets under this shade tree. And look what he prayed. And prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. He gets to a point in one day where he's ready to die. He goes and prays and asks the Lord, please take my life. I've had enough. Just yesterday, he was having miracles and ran 16 miles. Miraculously. I always get a picture of like Flash. Have y'all seen Flash with that red outfit on the jumpsuit? He outran horses and chariots of the king. These are not mules and donkeys. He outran them for 16 miles. Y'all get what I'm saying? But say he's tired. Say he's alone. Are y'all with me? All right. Go to, the go to my next passage. I think I'm going to verse 9. Jump down to verse 9. I just want to show you the problem. Next week we'll look at some of these other verses because he starts giving the solution. Watch this. Verse 9. There, came, there he came to a cave. Hence the name of this book, this great pastor wrote called The Cave because he went through a similar situation, very similar situation. He's got one of the largest churches in the world. And he went through the same situation where he was ready to quit the ministry. And he explains and, and explains this whole thing. And this is where I've gotten a lot of this material. And I want y'all to get the book because I can't, I can't explain all. I mean, it's 300 something pages. I can't tell you everything. But, I, but if you've been through this, this will change your life. This will change your life. Are y'all with me? Go online and just listen to it or get it if you need it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? All right. There he came to a cave where he spent the night. Have y'all ever been in a cave? Every time we go on vacation somewhere, Aruba or wherever we go, we go, we go on tours when we go with our kids. We'll go, in, go into these caves. And this last time, I can't remember where we I think we were in Aruba, and we went, to, uh, went into this cave. And it was, isn't that right? We went into this cave, and it, it was just absolute, absolutely beautiful. But, but they had to have lights. Once you go in a cave, it is dark. There were bats in there. I mean, you, can, you can't see your way up or down. You lose complete, it's like vertigo. You just, you can't tell where you are. I mean, it's just, oh, you get what I'm saying? It was good. And the Bible describes that this place, and it's, it's a metaphor, it's real, but it's a metaphor. He, there he came to a cave. It was this dark place that he'd gotten in in life. Y'all see it? Where he spent the night. Are y'all with me? But watch this. But the Lord said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing in this dark place? What are you doing in this place of depression? What are you doing in this, this place where you want to die? How did you get here? Watch this. Verse 10. Elijah replied, watch this, this is important. I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am only, I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Let me put it in, in Lee Stokes' version. I've been working hard day and night. I've been working, working, working day and night. <laughs> I've been working for you, Lord. I've been trying to build the church. I've been trying to do this. And, and people are talking about me. People are po people are saying lies about people are doing it. And ain't nobody doing this but me. Say he's talking to himself in a bad way. Do y'all see that? He's, he's, he's self-talking but negative. He's talked himself into something 
that he now believes, but it's not true. And it all got triggered by one person giving him a threat. Are y'all with me? Watch this. Then Elijah, verse 13, jump down to 13. That was 10. This is 13. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Here he says, still in the cave. And he replied again, I have zealously served the Lord, all God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. Sound familiar, doesn't it? He's called, this is called making a negative confession. This is called repeating to yourself the same problem that isn't real. He's self-talking a lie. Come on, somebody. And he's, he believes it because now he's even saying it again. What's the problem? What are you doing here? In the cave, he says it. Coming out of it, he's still saying this. Are y'all with me? All right. Now, was that verse 14? Yes, I think that was. Praise the Lord. Yes, 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 sir. All right. And I read it out of the NLT. So there's six things, six causes that I want to talk about. And let me just tell you personally, every one of these I identified in me. Every one of them. Every one of them. So I want to show you from the scriptures. Are y'all ready? Number one, you can just list them if you want to. Number one, life imbalances. Life imbalances. Remember this? Elijah entered into a cave of depression after 30 days of nonstop, powerful, miraculous ministry. He was going, 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 ran a 16-mile marathon the day before. He is tired. Can you say doing too much? Elijah was doing too much. He was doing everything. He was running back. Some of y'all are doing too much. Some of y'all going to work full time. You got kids. You're a single parent. You're trying to go to school at night. Then you're doing this other thing in the daytime. Then you're trying to work in ministry. Then you're trying to do this. And then you're running back and forth. And just like Elijah, you can get to a point where you go, yeah, I'm tired. Are y'all listening to me? Just real practical. He, this, life's imbalances. Oftentimes we talk so much about chemical imbalances. And if you go to the doctor, they'll try to find some chemical imbalance. They'll try to, when oftentimes we need to be talking more about life's imbalances. Your schedule's imbalances. Even God had to rest on one day. Some of y'all work seven days a week, work overtime, and still trying to get a bigger check. Uh-oh. Y'all didn't like that part right there. It was all right till you said that money part. Hey, watch this. More and more research is pointing to our lifestyles as the main factor that causes depression. And really, we're often exhausted by our unsustainable pace of life, and we're just simply doing too much. And many times we think, well, I can do this. But just because you can do something doesn't mean you can sustain that. You're not made for two jobs. And oftentimes, we've just got life out of balance. Hit the person next to you and say, get life back in balance. Let me help you do that. Turn over in your Bible. Let me show you what the Bible says. Over. How many, how many of y'all know I love, uh, love Solomon? I love the wisdom of the Proverbs and the Ecclesiastes. Look over in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 6, Amplified Bible. Let me show you something. that This is an American culture, cultural way that something that we as Americans do that will kill us. Look at this. Solomon wrote about it. Here's how he said it in the Amplified Bible. He says this, Better is a handful with quietness than both hands full with painful effort a vain striving after the wind and a feeding on it. What many Americans and what we do in our culture, if one cup of coffee is good, two is better. Hey, 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 if one Krispy Kreme donut is good, I know you've seen the commercial. If one Whopper is good, Two is better at the same price. Come on, somebody. If one car is good, come on, y'all help me preach. If one house is good, 
I need that vacation home, Pastor. Some of y'all are like, well, if one wife is good, well, don't you dare. <laughs> Two is deadly, Pastor. <laughs> y'all see this principle, and, and it's, it's, it's a thing that's killing us. It's a thing that's killing us. We want more and more and more and more, and it's killing us. And the Bible says, no, 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 what's wisdom is get one handful with peace and quiet versus two hands with this striving and killing myself and I'm working day and night and y'all see it right there and then it says feeding on the wind you end up with nothing come on somebody how many of you know that you and I have an expiration date on this body come on somebody you know the date you were born but you don't know the date that you're checking out but I can promise you this you will check out earlier if you embrace and keep that imp that principle right there keep trying to fill both of your hands are y'all with me so what is the answer what is the answer just what that bible says right there we need to slow down and prioritize our life here's really what the bible says about priorities and i've got some stuff here in this again get this book it'll help you but really god's priorities are like this put god first put people second and put things eternal third God first. Now, I know everybody in here and everybody who's a Christian say, oh, I got God first, but we don't live like it. Your lifestyle doesn't prove that. Your, your spending money doesn't prove it. If God was first, your money would be a little bit different. You'd put some things in priority. You'd be in church. You'd do, you'd do, you'd do that. We say certain things, but y'all get it. And we're going to help you get that stuff in order. Come on, somebody. Say, I'm talking to myself. Amen. And then eternal things. In fact, the Bible talks about it. Uh, uh, there, it's in all kinds of parables. Let me see if I put it down here. No. Uh, the Bible talks about this man, though, in Luke, and I, I'm already going over my time, but this man, Luke, in, in the chap, in book of Luke, he says, I know what I'm going to do. He was a very prosperous man. He says, I'm making so much money. Let me build some more barns and just some place where I can store more of my goods. And, and then remember what happened? God said to him, uh -uh, son, you 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 crazy why because your life's gonna be you're gonna die today this is it today you 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 spent your whole life on trying to get more stuff here you about to face eternity today are y'all listening to me and so we build our lives trying to get more and more stuff bigger and bigger stuff and when god is saying no no get this get this in the right perspective you got an eternity that's coming up and that's more important than what you're doing now Come on, somebody. Hit the person next to you. Say, slow down and prioritize your life. Number two, number two, number two. Did y'all get the first one? The first one was life imbalances. Number two, comparing ourselves with others. Do you remember this line that, that Elisha said? He said, I'm no better than my ancestors. It seems kind of like out in the blue. He said, you know, he says, I'm no better than my ancestors. What does that have to do with anything? What it had to do with everything was he's, comparing his life to someone else's y'all know that comparison here let me let me read yeah Theodore Roosevelt said comparison is the thief of joy comparison comparison brings pride or envy and jealousy why because we either compare somebody who's doing not as good as we are so we think and that gives us pride I got a bigger house. I got more money. <laughs> my job's better. I got more titles at the end of my name. <laughs> or we see somebody who's got more and I wish I had. I wish I had their, their life. I wish I had their house. I wish I could go on vacation where they go on vacation. I wish I could do what they do. I wish I had their job. Envy and jealousy. Proverbs talks about it over and over and over. James talks about it. He says, this will rob you. This will open the door for all types of bitterness, all types of disease and sickness when you start getting jealous and envious by looking at somebody else's life. What's the remedy? Here's the remedy right here in Galatians. Oh, by the way, by the way, social media has been used by the devil to promote a, fa a facade of a perfected life in others that simply isn't realistic. You know it. They're taking pictures like this, and you taking pictures like this. But they didn't tell you that they use them. They don't look like that in real life. 
got all kind of filters, stars flying around them, their eyes all glistening. I'm like, dang, they look nice. No, they don't. They're just regular people just like you. Are y'all listening to me? Here's what the Bible says about it. Watch this. Turn over to Galatians chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. They'll put it up on the screen. Look what Paul writes. He says, pay careful attention to your own work, your own life, your own marriage, your own. For then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else, for we are each responsible for our own conduct and lives. Some of y'all need to take a fast off of social media. Let me, let me not get caught up right there. And y'all know it, on the internet, do y'all remember when the internet came in? And they were called World Wide Web, and they were saying stuff like, you'll be able to just add a button, be able to find out anything. Do y'all need to know everything that's on there? Do you really care about what all these people, come on, most of it, come on, I got to see what you're eating for lunch, breakfast, and then I got to see you, see you flexing your muscles at the gym, I, I got to see, I'm tired of that. You're telling me everything, well, I think, I don't care, listen, we need to be selective about what we know. We need to be selective, there's too much. It's too much. It, it's too much. Come on, do y'all need to know how to cook everything? Anybody don't care? It's like, oh, five steps to get your money. It's like everybody's telling you, everybody's an expert in telling you how to be something better than what you are. Are y'all listening to me? And God says, stop, stop comparing yourself to everybody because it's making you feel small and you don't need to know who you are based on who they say you are. You need to know who you are based on who I said you are. <laughs> Comparing ourselves to others, number two. Number three, watch this, ruminating and negative self-talk. Ruminating, that's another word for meditating. Ruminating, and that's the word that psychologists and stuff use. But do you remember this? He said that same statement, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 10 and 14, exact same wording. I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, but the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, and I'm left alone, and they seek to take my life too. Remember, he said it two different verses. He's been repeating this thing over and over. Why? Have you ever done this? You make a mistake, you do something, you say something, and then that thing just keeps rolling around in your head, and keeps rolling around in your head, keeps rolling around. You keep, you, if I hadn't have said that, if, I, if I'd have just said this different, if I'd have done this different, if I hadn't have gone there, if I hadn't have said, and you, come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? Ruminating is what animals, like cows, have you ever seen cows? Have you ever seen cows? Cows, are, they'll be standing, you drive by and they're just like, They ain't put their head down in the grass in a day. What are they doing? They get some grass, some hay, they eat some grass, and then they chew it and they swallow it. And I've heard that they've got four stomachs where the, the food will go down in the stomach and then they regurgitate it back up and then chew it some more, swallow it again, regurgitate it, throw it up, put it in their mouth. So they, they just stand there. They call it chewing the cud. What you doing? Chewing the cud. And what it is, is it's ruminating. It's just over and over. And we do that spiritually. We do it with stuff, thinking, what if, if I had a said this different, if I hadn't done that in life, if I, if I hadn't cheated on my wife, if I hadn't got that, if I hadn't done this, if I hadn't, my whole life would be different. If I hadn't got a C in that class, and had I not, y'all get what I'm saying? 95% of our emotions are determined by the way we talk to ourselves. Brian Tracy says that. What's God's solution? Turn over to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Y'all with me? I'm only on number 3. I got three more to go. I'm not doing that good. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Watch what Paul says about it. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, of good report, if there be any virtue, if there anything praiseworthy, think on these things is the last part of the verse, right? 
If there's any, think on these things. Go to verse 9 for me, y'all. Come on. Yeah, meditate, meditate on these things or ruminate on those things. The things which you've learned and received and heard and saw in me, these things do, and the God of peace will be with you. He says if you get your thinking right, you'll have your peace back. But what we're doing is flooding ourselves with the wrong stuff. Notice that in that list, think on things that are lovely. It didn't say think on things that are Netflix. Y'all with me? Amen. Did y'all get that? Ruminating. So we've got we've to gotta get some. Now, here's how you hedge it off. You get some right thinking, but then we need some daily affirmations. You're gonna, your mind is going to be thinking. It's going to be it's going to be moving. But why not get some daily affirmations about ourselves to ourselves based on our identity in Christ and our purpose? Here's some of mine. Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life, and I exist to serve and glorify him. I am growing closer to him. He is giving me supernatural blessing, influence, anointing, and protection. Here's another. Today, my words, thoughts, and imaginations are under the power of Christ. I take all thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ. Here's another one. I am disciplined. Christ in me is stronger than the wrong desires in me. I wake up with purpose, direction, and meaning every day of my life. And will lay down my life to serve her. How about this one? I love my children and lead them to love God and serve him with their whole hearts. I nurture, equip, train, and empower them to do more for his kingdom than they can imagine. Remember this in 1 Kings, verse 2 and 3. Jezebel did not seen, send a hitman. Jezebel just simply sent a message. He responded and reacted not to reality, but to a threat. What somebody said, a message sent. He acted wrong, and many of us respond, respond wrong way. An inability to process pain in a healthy way. Watch this. It's not what happens to me that matters, but what happens. I've got every book of his said that. It's not what happens, what happens to me. It's what's happening in me that's going to determine how I react that happens to me. Are y'all listening to me? Turn over to John. Watch this. Jesus said this. All right. He said, I've told you all this. So God wants you to have in life. You're going to have some financial problems. You're going to have some health issues. You're going to pass to stop confessing that. Over. No, we got to get real. We're in an earth suit in a fallen world. Here, uh, her husband, y'all know, in the High Point Police Department, on his way to work, on his work. What you mean he's at work? Oh, they just gave him another car. I'm like, hold up, that car, you, can, you can't hardly walk out of that car. She goes, oh, he good. Come on, somebody. I promise you he wasn't planning on that today. Are y'all listening to me? Stuff happens in life. We can't, oh, just know it. In life, stuff is going to happen. You're going to get some negative news. It's how you react to that that Jesus is concerned about here. Are y'all with me? And many times we, uh, we respond the wrong way. More and more people are turning to unhealthy ways from drugs and alcohol, TV binging, video game binging, overeating, Oreo addiction, jalapeno potato chips addiction. To escape difficulty. Have you ever just sat down in Netflix with a whole package of, I mean the, the, the party pack of double stuff Oreos. It got an extra row in it. Sit there with the whole thing and just hands all green from the jalapeno powder on the potato chips. Go to the bathroom and all you smell is jalapeno chips and Oreos. Like, walk in the room and your wife's like, I smell like jalapenos in here. Somewhere. I don't know. Just in denial. Here's the solution. Y'all want to know God's solution? 
And every drama, everything that goes on in your life, there's a purpose in that pain. What I found out when this, when this pain happened, when anything happens in life, God is trying to tell you something. He didn't necessarily bring the problem. God didn't cause Rob to have that accident. God, are y'all with me? God didn't put me in that depression that I was in. But he was telling me something in the middle of it. And I'm telling you something because I got some purpose in that pain. Now I understand. We're going to be starting small groups, and that's coming up to my next group. We're going to be starting small groups. I want to encourage you because every one of you are qualified because of the pain you've been in life been through in life how many of y'all been through some stuff i mean some stinky stuff has happened to you somebody did you wrong you did somebody wrong you got fired somebody fired you something ha- come on anybody other than me had some stuff happen in life you are now qualified to help somebody else let me show you what the bible what jesus says about it listen y'all with me turn over to second corinthians chapter one verse three through six real quickly i just got two more while they're playing i'm gonna get them here Nelson, I got it. Don't, come on, don't you run out on me. Watch, because you need these last two. Watch this. Look at this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 through 6. I'm going to read it. Praise be to God, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. Say comfort. Watch this. Who comforts us in all our troubles. Why? So that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. He said, what you went through and God fixed it for you, you got to help somebody else. If you've been addicted, if you've been hurt, if you were a juvenile, if you were, if you fed, whatever your problems, whatever your issues are, God says, take that pain and turn it into purpose. Anybody been through a divorce? Anybody ever walked out on your life and said, I don't love you anymore? And you made it through that? You got to tell somebody else how to get through that. If you've been through a divorce and lost everything you had, you need to have one of these small groups that helps other people say, but God brought me out. I was addicted on crack cocaine, but God delivered me. There's some other people who are struggling with that same thing, and you got to help them. Are y'all listening to me in this place? Number five, real quickly. Y'all remember we said it over and over. He kept isolating himself. I had you say it, isolating himself. He sulked in his solitude. Isolation and loneliness is number five. Here's how important this is that we need each other. The first problem in the Bible in Genesis 3, it was solitude in Genesis 2. God created everything in creation. He said everything's good except one thing. That's him alone. Sin wasn't the problem. Loneliness was. And oftentimes in our problems, anybody like me, acquiesce to by myself. And there are some times it's good to be by yourselves, but let me just tell you, has anybody ever made any bad decisions on their own? I'm going to wait for the rest of y'all lying devils to come out of these people. You get alone. I got by myself, and I didn't tell Shanae. I'm like, okay, I got it. I'm going to sell the church. That's it. I got this. I got this. This pressure. I don't need this. Uh, I'm moving to Aruba. That's my happy place. My happy place is in Aruba. That's it. I'm out of here. When I told Sinead, she said, have you lost your mind? Well, just for a little while, I did. I mean, I was a little bit crazy. We make some poor decisions on our own, y'all. We need people. We need people. And this is why we need relationships. Look what the Ecclesiastes said. Tell the person sitting next to you, say, I need you. Especially when I'm in trouble. We need each other. As soon as Katrina told me and showed me the picture of Rob's car, I grabbed my phone back there and hit hit Rob up and said, hey, man, you good? He's like, hey, Pastor, what's up, man? Yeah, man, I'm good. Thanks for calling me. Dude, I love you, man. Stop playing. I said, did you put her in jail, the person who ran into you? <laughs> I said, of all the people to hit, I mean, you don't want to hit a police officer. He said, no, I just cited her. She wasn't paying attention. I said, put her, go and find her and put her in jail. <laughs> Look what Ecclesiastes, I'm closing, I'm closing. I just got one more real quick. Ecclesiastes says this, chapter four, verse, watch this. We need relationships, and this is why we're starting small groups. Small groups is going to be one of the biggest parts of our church. 
small groups. You need somebody. You need somebody who's going through, and we're going to have several types of groups. I'll be telling you about that, but that's going to be starting. You need some. In other words, church isn't enough right here. And there's going to be several, several groups where you can get involved in if you want to, and we want you to, and I'll be talking to you. But we'll look what the Bible says. Again, my man Solomon says this, two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help, but someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm, but how can one be warm alone? Look at this. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Tell the person sitting next to you and say, I got your back. And it says even three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. If there's somebody sitting next to you, just reach over and touch them, touch appropriately. Y'all get what I'm saying. I got to straighten y'all people out. Don't make me come down here and pull my belt off. I'll whoop everybody up in this place. I will run through these aisles like diarrhea and beat every one of y'all. You better touch their hand. If they touch something inappropriate, you raise your hand and I'm going to come down there. Now, if it's your wife and your husband, wife, you can squeeze the booty if you want to. I ain't going to say nothing, but. <laughs> y'all get this? We need each other. I need you, Nelson. Annette, I need you, Joe. Pastor Joe, I need you. Joe straightened me out several times. I need you, Jack. Jake's, Jack straightened me out. My mama straightened me out before. Pastor Larry, Pastor and Bob, you know, they straighten me out every day. I need y'all. Jahani, Johnny, Nancy, I need y'all. Tell the person sitting next to you, we need you. The Bible says so many secrets about this in a matter of time. Y'all hear the piano player playing. That means I'm supposed to shut up. And so I, I, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move. Here's number five. Last one. Last one spiritual warfare Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying she sent a message and not a hit man why because the devil he can't do anything to you without your consent the devil knows you ain't got to, you ain't got to even shed any blood I can have him kill himself just with the right words I can get him into a position where you won't have to touch him I get him thinking the wrong way, he'll kill his own self. Spiritual warfare. Last one. Stand up on your feet. Satan's weapons, only weapons, temptation and deception, so he's got to get in your head to defeat you. And so the Bible gives us the remedy. Y'all know it, that the thieves comes only but to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I came to give you life, give it to you more abundantly. Y'all know then 1 Peter chapter 5, remember this? Let me read this verse. Real quickly, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Cast it, and I don't have time to teach that. Be alert and be sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's looking for someone, but he can't hurt you without your consent and cooperation and participation. What does the Bible say do? This last verse right here, 2 uh, Corinthians, yeah, 2 Corinthians 10. For though we walk in this flesh, we don't war according, we don't war like the flesh. Watch. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're not fleshly, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Y'all have heard me teach about this in Ephesians 6. You've heard me teach about this. Casting down arguments or imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against God's word. Anything that comes against what God says, you've got to pull that down. You've got to cast down that wrong thinking. He had wrong thinking, and many of us do as well. With every head bowed, every eye closed. Again, I just took you six, six steps in. Next week, I'm going to show you the five things. Of course, you, you can see some of the remedy in that, but there are clearly, clearly, and you'll be surprised at what the remedy was. You'll be surprised at some of them. How many of y'all will come back and, and hear them next week and bring somebody with you? How many of y'all learned today? Now, again, I didn't have time. Now, when we start our small groups, when we sm start our, and y'all going to lead some of them. Y'all going to really help us. Right there, Marty. I love y'all. Y'all have got a call on your life, and you're going to really help us in this. Jack, Dana, so many of you are going to be able to really help us, help people. For most of the growth and, and the discipling will happen is right in those small groups. People 
handle that. And then they're not all going to be groups that are, you know, group, there'll be some groups like walking groups. Jack likes to drive cars. Some people like to cook and eat. Come on, somebody, get me in your group. If you've got an Oreo group, I'm starting a stubble, double stuff Oreo group. Just bring your own milk. Come on, somebody. But we need each other. I need you, Rhonda. Pastor Ron, excuse me. Johnny, I need you, man. I need y'all, Chief. Y'all hear me? If you're here today, every head bowed, every eye closed, and particularly those of you that may be facing some real stress, real mental anguish, please don't leave here today without allowing us to pray for you. And we're going to be changing up our altar calls. We're going to be making some changes to make this more streamlined so we can have more people, more services, and get this get you the help that you need. I need y'all. God, I need you. Oh. See, I'm already late. They're mad at me right now, four minutes. But there's, God wants to do a work in this place on each of us. And it can't be done just in these pews. It has to be done among friends, among peers. Courtney so many people's lives that you touch that, that care less about what I think. Are y'all with me? If you, with every head bowed or every eye closed, no one moving around. We're, we're going to beat everybody out of here, y'all. And I'm already four minutes late. I'm supposed to be done. But please, let me, let me do this. And we're going to be changing this soon. But if you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life or if you're watching by internet and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's the most important thing to get saved, to make sure that you, you're on your way to heaven. Whatever life throws you, you know that you've got eternal ever comes your way, if somebody says, I don't love you, if some car hits you, whatever happens, you know you've got a home to go to. Not made with hands, where the streets are made of gold. You need Jesus. Come on with somebody. First call is that, if you need Jesus, I'm talking to you. Second call is this, you've made Jesus your Lord, but look, good Lord, good Lord, I've walked away from him. I've walked away from God. For one reason or another, I know it, life be life and for real though. I get it. I get it. The reason you're here today is because God is reaching out to you. He's, even though you may have walked away from him, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's madly in love with you. He's not mad at you. Second call is for rededication. If you're, if you're here today and you say, Pastor Lee, that's me, man. Anybody like that? With every head bowed, just throw your hand up real quickly. Anybody like that that says, yeah, Pastor, I've gotten away from God, but I want to get back. Just shoot your hand up real high and put it down. No, there's nothing around. Just me. Third call is this. Connect with destiny. How many of y'all realize you're in a good church? Anybody know it? You are. You are. And we're making some changes that's going to make it a much better church so we can minister to you much more effectively and reach your entire family and minister to you right where you are in your home. Help you out. Are y'all with me? And you can affect your world. We want to get connected to you. and We want you connected to us. If you've never made destiny your home church, but this place resonates with you, I'm talking to you. That third call is for you. Fourth and final call is for prayer. If you're here today and maybe you've been under some real anxiety, stress, and pressure, and maybe this message really spoke to you, we want to pray for you today. And maybe you're facing other problems. Maybe it's in your marriage. Maybe it's with your children. Maybe you got a negative report from the doctor. Maybe whatever it is, I don't know. God knows. But I know that the Bible says that we are to pray for each other. If there's anybody sick, let him call for the elders and they'll pray for him. The Bible even says if he's committed a sin, you know how you confess your sins to Jesus? He forgives you, but you know that don't fix your problem? The Bible says you better confess to one another so that you may be healed. Deliverance comes through the partnership of praying with someone else. Confessing to God, God's forgiven. Confessing your faults to another person brings restoration and healing. Four calls, salvation, rededication, connecting with destiny and for prayer. Every eye closed, no one moving around. We're just about to dismiss. When I count to three, if that's you, any of those calls for salvation, rededication, I'm going to ask you to one, do one big thing. We won't be doing this for long, this, and this won't take you long. I'm going to be changing this, but if you're here today, and any of those calls for salvation, rededication, connecting with destiny, or you need prayer, when I get to three, move out of that seat and run down here really quick. Don't wait. Don't, then, don't talk to anybody. This is between you and God. Here we go, saints, I'm praying. One, two, don't wait, move now, right now. Three, move out of your seat. If you need prayer for anything, come on, right now.
Here they come. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, somebody. Make some noise for them. Thank y'all. Come on. Here they come. Come on. Yeah. Y'all make some more noise. If you ain't moving, at least clap. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Make some noise. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Run down here. Come on. Come on. We got room for you. Yes, yeah. Well, y'all, come on. Do this for me. Amen. Run. Thank y'all. Anybody else says, yes, pastor, I need to get saved. I need to get rededicated. I need to be a partner, join this church. Yes, yes, yes. Or I need some prayer. Can we bless you on the way out? Yes, yeah, make some more noise, y'all. They're still coming. We got room for you. I know I'm late. Y'all, I'm still working it out, y'all. I mean to have you in your car at noon so you can beat everybody else to Golden Corral. But just, uh, we all make some noise for all these down here. Come on, put them together like this. Make them hurt. Make them red. Uh. First of all, what you've done is one of the biggest, biggest moves in your life. And when you move, God moves. I'm going to say a prayer. When I say this, you say it out of, out of your mouth loud enough you hear it with your own ears. You're going to be forever saved, forever forgiven right now. Say this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus died and rose again from the dead just for me. You're my Lord, my Savior my healer, my provider, my protector, my deliverer, my peace. Right now, I'm forever forgiven, forever saved, forever healed, forever protected, forever righteous. In Jesus' name. We all give God the loudest shout of praise you've given him all day today. If you said that prayer for the first time, you are born again, forever forgiven, Know that God has great things in, in store for you. We want to connect with you. If you would, if you're in your seat, if you're, if you're watching online. T- first of all, all y'all down here, turn to my left. I wear my watch on my left hand. Your right, and go that way. We've got some information that we're going to get from you and give you some. Make some noise for all them real quickly. Y'all make some more noise. Stop playing with me. Pastor Joe, I'm nine minutes late. Y'all don't fire me. If you, if you got saved, it, again, this is where, y'all got to help me on this. Text the word SAVED to 336-800-8188. Or if you want to connect with Destiny, text the word CONNECT to 336-203, uh, whatever, yeah, 8586. And if you'd like to give before you get out today, you can give online or give on your phone by texting the word GIVE to 336-344-7088. Amen. Listen, this Wednesday, I'm teaching on the blessing of Abraham. Again, we're changing some of our services. We're going to begin having one service on a Wednesday evening. Wednesday, I'll still do the afternoon, but just one Wednesday a month. That's coming up, and it may be a year from now. It may be a while from now. We're getting some things in place where all this flows a little bit better, our altar calls and all that kind of stuff. So bear with us as we make some of these changes. Are you all with us? Amen. We're going to make some changes that's going to help this church grow and help us be what God's called us to be. Amen. Text the word give if you'd like to give to 336-344-7088. Is that it? Yes. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, let me bless you on your way out. By the way, if you are here the first time, for the first time, I want to meet you and hug your neck in Guest Central. It's right out the doors to the right on the right side of the building. I'm going to be over there in just a minute. Let me bless you on your way out. Point at me, y'all. Y'all pray for me, too. I declare you blessed in all your comings and goings. No weapon formed against you can prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, I condemn it. Why? Because you're the righteousness of God. You're the healed. You're the protected. You're the blessed coming and going and there's no weapon form that can prosper against you you are blessed to be a blessing listen I love you Shanae and I love you we love you and we can't wait to see you right here next time at Destiny I'll look for you online or in the building on Wednesday for Bible study love y'all God bless you be blessed peace